If you had asked my like younger self if I would have become a ballerina, I probably would have laughed and said, no way. Looking at you or the camera? Okay. When I started dancing, I, I grew up at my mom's dance school, and they had everything there, jazz, lyrical, hip-hop, tap, even though I was horrible. And ballet, I think, takes the most discipline and dedication. But my mom was my ballet teacher, and she made sure that I always took ballet, and thank God she did, because I definitely wouldn't have gotten to be in the New York City Ballet. The reason I got in the New York City Ballet was because I was doing a Broadway show in New York. And my mother, of course, made sure that I had really good ballet training and she had found a former New York City Ballet dancer in California. So they had suggested to me, we really think now that you're moving to New York, you should audition for School of American Ballet, which is the feeding school into New York City Ballet. It was then where I saw the New York City Ballet perform for the first time. Um, my dad always reminds me that I said to him, Daddy, I'm going to dance on that stage someday. Doing the Kennedy Center Honors um, is where I performed for President Obama and First Lady. And that was pretty amazing. I mean, one, I was getting to dance one of my favorite roles, which is a a George Balanchine ballet called Two Cares, and it's one of my favorite solos to dance. So I was getting to honor a ballerina that I really look up to, Patricia McBride, and also getting to dance, you know, for the president and his wife was pretty cool. And I got to do that um, for two years. So that was, that was really exciting. I, I also read about this injury that you had because it sounds it, was it a neck injury? Yes. And it sounds like quite a serious thing that happened to you. Yes, so the back injury was a very, very big herniated disc in my neck. Um, and yeah, it was a very stressful and traumatic time because I was told I would never dance again. And if I didn't get surgery right away, I might not be able to walk again. I'll never forget the phone call. I had gotten, you know, the MRI and I was waiting the results. And I, I was literally going to opening night of the New York City Ballet, one of our seasons, and I was supposed to be in three ballets that night. The doctor said, you have to promise me you won't go into work today. Tyler, it's really, your neck, it's really bad. And that's what it was hard is I just like, tell me, even if it's like two years I need to take off, I just wanted to know or hear someone say you're gonna be okay. I did lots of physical therapy and I did a lot of, um, energy healing and had you told me you know about energy healing before my injury I probably would have been like that doesn't work um, but I, I really swear by it and I think that between my physical therapist and the energy work that I did I really think that that's why my neck ended up like healing. What else did you say? And like your whole social media presence. Oh that's so she wow. think the reason why it works is because I, I didn't try to make it work. It was during the pandemic and my sister was the principal of a high school and she went on Zoom the very first day and my mom teaches at her school and she had said, Tyler, like since you're home, like what about if you just pop on and you're like the guest teacher instead of me today? And I was like, okay, like I'm gonna give myself class anyways because I need to, so I'll just give them class. And then I thought, well, if I'm giving them class, like, maybe I should try this Instagram Live thing and give anybody who's at home classes. And I thought there'd be like 10 people, no joke. And I didn't even really know. And then there was like 15,000. And I was like, what's this number? Like, I, I don't understand what's going on. And so it, it just organically became this Turn It Out With Tyler class that I did a class every single day for at least eight or nine months. I think that like the various projects come from the fact that I did like the various styles growing up. So when I did the Little Dancer show, my co-star, his name's Kyle Harris, he had written this little poem called Katarina Ballerina. And it was the cutest little poem. And I was like, Kyle, this is really good. I think that there's like something here. 
we were saying like, oh, we want to have like a picture book kind of thing, Lane, and that's what we did. We did Katarina Ballerina, and then the next one is Katarina Ballerina and the Victory Dance. Oh, the clothing. <laughs> that's just because I wear leotards all day long, and you know, you get so tired of pulling it down or making sure it has the right neckline, and I just thought, you know, maybe it would be nice for a dancer who actually like lives in the clothes to try and make something that fit. So Callie is my little multi-poo and she just turned 14. I've had her since she was seven weeks. And she normally goes with me everywhere. Whenever I travel in the States, she goes every single place with me. She loves the airplane. She knows exactly what to do. She comes to class with me every single day. She just lays by my spot. She hangs out in my dressing room. We got to meet the lovely um, Roman. Um, yeah. We were doing class. But I was curious if you guys have like a meet cute story, if you know what that is. It's funny because actually I started dancing with him like five years ago, I would say. And he was very new in the company and I was already quite established there. It wasn't until the pandemic actually. I was like, okay, I had all these projects I wanted to do them. I thought, okay, who's gonna come to my hometown of Bakersfield and who can stay like in my house with my family for like three months and not think it's weird? And I was like, Roman's young and he's really cool and this is what's so weird is like that was one of the weird projects I asked him. I asked him for the bar project, I asked him for Alonzo King and then I said and there's this weird one where you have to marry me. And I remember there's a part where I like actually walk down the aisle you know and he's standing there I mean we literally you know we hold hands and it was so sweaty and I was like don't worry this is really not real like I'm not tricking you into something like <laughs> So whenever I ask him, like, when did you start liking me? He was like, I guess it was when we got married. I don't know, like, that's his joke. I think what I always like to say to, like, younger dancers, because I find a lot of dancers, like, after they stop, are like, oh, don't do it, or this or that. Like, it's such a hard profession. I actually just, I love to dance and I think it is like the best feeling. I just think that if you love it and you realize that you're gonna have to like sacrifice things to get there, you have to have talent and you have to have a drive. And I think that if you have that and you love it, you should definitely do it. Um, yeah, I just love to dance. <laughs>